a brand new channel, Sensei's Kitchen Top, where we play casual Magic the Gathering and other such nerdy games. My name is Steven, I will be your host for today, and today we will be playing Pauper Commander. I'd like to point out that these decks are just made from commons I had lying around, so they're not tuned or anything, and also Luke is still learning the fine tunings of Commander. If you've never heard of Pauper Commander before, I highly recommend that you check it out. There's many, many videos introducing you to the format, and it's just a great time. I am playing Carnage Gladiator, and I keep an opener of Three Swamps, Skurs Dag Supplicant, Read the Bones, Spike Jester, and Chandra's Outrage. My friend Luke is playing my Tatiova Benthic Druid deck, and keeps an opener with Two Forests, a Mike Synth Wellspring, 4C, Opt, and Wood Elves. To begin the game, Luke plays a forest and pass turn. I draw for turn, play a swamp, and pass turn back. Luke opens with the first spell of the game by casting a Mycosynth Wellspring, allowing him to search for a basic land and put it into his hand. I simply play a swamp and pass the turn back. Luke plays an island, taps for three mana and casts a Wood Elves, fetching up a forest and I am already crying at the amount of ramp Luke has. I finally play my first red mana and cast Read the Bones. I put one card to the top, one card to the bottom, and almost forget to draw two cards. Having gone to 28 life, I then pass turn back to Luke. Luke draws for turn, plays his fifth land, and manages to cast his commander. Oh boy. I draw for turn, Play another Swamp, tap 2 mana, and cast a Spike Jester, giving me some board presence finally. I swing in with the Spike Jester, Luke puts the Wood Elves in front of it, and we trade creatures. The Tatiova value train begins as Luke plays his 6 land, draws a card, and goes to 31 life. He then continues the card draw Madness by casting an Elvish Visionary. In my turn, I untap my land, draw another card, play my fourth Swamp, and play a pet favourite card of mine, Giant Scorpion. As we go into turn 6, Luke continues on the value train, drawing cards, gaining life, and in general, being an utter nuisance. He taps 1 blue and 4 mana to cast Monomic, Monomic, Monomic Wall, however you say it, with no instants and sorceries in Graveyard. I untap, draw, and cast a Skurzdag Supplicant. I swing in with my Death Touch creature, hoping Luke hasn't noticed said Death Touch, which he hasn't, so he blocks with his wall, and it bites the dust. Luke plays another land, gains another life, and draws another card. <sighs> he begins to count up a scary amount of mana, this being 5, and casts Hooting Mandrels. I then briefly have to explain the delve mechanic to him. Okay, three, four, five, yeah. So unless you tap another mana, you have to exile a card from your graveyard to pay for it. Which he then does. I draw into my second red source, which I then play, and attempt to kill Tatiova. Then comes the slow pause and tapping of mana that all magic players have come to fear, and the inevitable counterspell. Goodbye, most of my chance of this game. Another land, another card draw, another life gain. Life goes on. And then, because he doesn't have quite enough mana ramp yet, he casts a pristine talisman. And oh hey look, more card draw, with opt. He scries one, keeps it, and draws it into his hand. I draw hoping for some more removal, and get yet another land. I tap two and a red to cast Act of Treason to steal Tatiova, and after a brief pause, it resolves. I then hop on the value train for one stop only, play a land, gain a life, and draw a card. Yay! And then my commander joins the fray, Carnage Gladiator. I then swing with Giant Scorpion, and Tatty over. Smacking him in the face with his own commander feels so good. He goes to 30 life, then promptly goes back up to 31. He casts an Oishra Cultivator, yay, more mana ramp, and passes turn back to me. I play a Swamp then cast a Gravedigger, which indeed digs some graves. I get my Spike Jester back, which I then play again, along with another hasty boy, Valley Dasher. I then swing in with my 2-3, a 3-1, and a 2-2. The 3-1 gets blocked by a 4-4. Four, four. 
the 2-3 gets blocked by Tatiova, and the final one gets blocked by Elvish Visionary. Luke loses 3 life because of my commander. Then the Skurz Dag, Spike Jester, and Elvish Visionary all die. On Luke's turn, he untaps, draws, and plays the fan favourite Lanner Elves. Yay. He then taps 3 mana to sacrifice his Cultivator, searching for another land onto the battlefield, which of course triggers Tatiova. He draws a card, gains a life, and then kindly passes turn back to me. I untap and draw. I play a mountain, tap three lands, and attempt to do black shenanigans by casting Soul Salvage. I very happily choose two creatures in my graveyard to return. But of course I'm playing against blue, so fun is not allowed to happen. It gets countered. As it turns out, Luke didn't know how to use X cost spells, so I quickly had to explain. It still gets countered though. I go into combat, swing with Valley Dasher, Grave Digger, and my commander. Luke thinks he's hit the jackpot and blocks Grave Digger with Lanarels and Valley Dasher with Hooting Mandrels. He takes two because of Carnage Gladiator's ability, and because blue isn't the only one with instants, I cast Diner Charge Overloaded, buffing my creatures by plus two plus oh. This kills both of his blockers, one of my attackers, and he takes six commander damage. This puts him on 21 life. Just as I'm celebrating my great combat trick, he casts Life Goes On, getting him at 8 life, putting him at even higher than he was before. Wonderful. He untaps his lands, draws a card, plays another land, draws another card, and plays Lanara Elves Part 2, Elvish Mystic. He counts out 4 mana and casts, ironically named, 4C. He looks at the top four cards of his library. He puts two back on top and two back on the bottom, and then draws two cards. He then casts a big flying boy that allows him to detain my one and only Death Touch blocker. Wonderful. He casts Omen Speaker, scries two more cards, then promptly smacks me in the face with his commander, putting me to 26. I then very excitedly cast Claws of Valakut, which gives my commander plus 4 plus 0 oh and first strike. I swing in with my scarily huge commander, which he chump blocks with an Elvish Mystic and takes one from the ability. Luke casts Adventurous Impulse and reveals an Eldrazi. Well, balls. Hopefully he can't cast it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For my Eldrazi. Bugger. He attacks, putting me to 23 and passes turn. I draw, hoping for something excellent, and am rewarded with a swamp. Luke plays yet another forest, gains yet another life, and draws yet another card. He then taps 4 and casts Hieroglyphic Illumination to draw more cards. He then attacks in with his flyer and his large, large Eldrazi. I then block the Eldrazi with my Death Touch Scorpion, taking 1 damage from my own commander. However, before damage, he returns my trusty scorpion to hand with a repeal. I take 3 from the flyer and 8 from the Eldrazi, putting me at a very sad 11 life. I draw another card and am greeted by yet another land. Yay! I pay the 1 for Ruptured Spire and recast my scorpion. I attack with my commander, which I probably shouldn't have done. He chump blocks it and takes 1 from the ability. He taps a blue and talisman to gain one life and play Jeskai Sage. He plays an island, drawing a card and gaining another life. He then casts Nature's Claim, targeting his own Microsynth's Wealthbring, which I would never have thought of, gaining him four life and another land from his library. He swings in with his flyer, not wanting to lose his big Eldrazi to my death touch. I draw a card and play another mountain, buffing my commander by plus one, plus O. Oh. Then I swing in again, stupidly. He blocks with his sage, losing one life and drawing yet another card. He gains a life and draws a card. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He casts a Baloth Gorger, playing the kicker cost so it comes in with three 1-1 counters, making it a 7-7. Seven, seven. 
and I go to 5. I draw yet another swamp, play it, swing in with my commander again. For some reason he decides not to block it and it puts him 1 away from commander damage. Unfortunately my camera stopped recording and I lost the rest of the footage, but you can imagine how it went. He swung in with his bird, twice more I think, and killed me. This was not a good game for my Carnage Gladiator deck. It's meant to be quite a fast deck, very aggressive, coming out the gate swinging, and I didn't play anything till turn 3 and it wasn't even a creature. By the time I was getting bodies down, Luke already had the upper hand, he had bodies down to block me and keep himself alive until he could play his big guns. I'm also not running too much land in this deck since it's fairly low end on the CMC but I just kept on drawing it late game and it totally screwed me over. Tatiova on the other hand was having a dream game for the deck. As soon as she's able to stay out for most of the game you're almost guaranteed a win. Almost every turn guaranteed card draw and life gain just puts you so far ahead of the opponent especially in pauper where card draw is not quite as prevalent. Thank you for watching this first video from Sensei's Kitchen Top. It's more of an experiment than anything really. I'm not totally sure if I'll have the time or energy to keep this up consistently, but I wanted to see what it was like and give it a try, and hopefully I'll be able to come back and do some more content for this channel. Do stay tuned. Thank you and goodbye.